Subscribe now this channel. Of all the car guys I pestered in my childhood, I remember only one. While most of the neighborhood gentry contentedly passed their time messing around under the hoods of tired pony cars while sipping cheap beer and cranking proto-rock from the finest sensationally titled riff vendors FM radio had to offer, Gary, maybe his real name, maybe not, had it bad for the Chevrolet Suburban. Or maybe that's just the only vehicle he had to work with. Either way, after a summer of watching various performance components find their way onto the bourbon, Gary took me for a ride that nullified everything I thought I knew about the relationship between speed and mass. Fast forward some 30 years, and I'm hustling a Mercedes AMG GLS 63 through the craggy terrain outside Moab, Utah, experiencing Technicolor flashbacks of the sort usually reserved for Woodstock survivors. Sure. The GLS 63 is an imminently more refined beast, its heated and ventilated leather front buckets, with massage function, natch, and chubby, leather-covered wheel a far cry from the blanket-covered bench and oversize hula hoop tiller of Gary's Suburban. But for delivering forward thrust far out of scale with an enormous SUV, the vibe is definitely there. Refreshed and renamed for the 2017 model year. The GLS 63 comes by its quickness not by an infusion of aftermarket add-ons, but by careful design and engineering from the start. As a Mercedes-AMG model, its 5.5-liter twin-turbo V8 is hand-assembled by the skilled crew of AMG technicians in a facility in Affalterbach, Germany. While the 5.5-liter isn't new for 2017, AMG did manage to harvest an additional 27 ponies from the engine, which now produces 577 horsepower, torque increases by 1 pound to foot, to 561, but its full brunt now comes online at 1750 revolutions per minute, slightly earlier than before. While the non-AMG 2017 GLS class models feature a new 9-speed automatic transmission, the GLS 63 retains the familiar AMG Speed Shift Plus 7-speed automatic, which is tailored to play nicely with the GLS 63's rear-biased all-wheel drive calibration. While it's possible that this powertrain will enable the GLS 63 to beat the 4.8 second time we recorded with a 2013 GL63 AMG, Mercedes quotes 4.5 seconds for the new GLS 63, our test team thinks it won't be a lot quicker. On the road, the thrust comes on early, hurling roughly 5,800 pounds of AMG at the horizon with more aggression than seems necessary in polite company. Man, what a weird and wonderful world we live in. Tasked with putting the kibosh on these proceedings, 15.4-inch front and 14.2-inch rear brake rotors supplant the GLS 550's 14.8 and 13.6-inch units. The GLS 350D and GLS 450 make do with comparatively puny 13.8 and 13.6-inch rotors. While brake pedal action is far from telepathic, it's dramatically improved over the gooey brake feel that plagued our long-term 2013 GL 450. Stomp the pedal and the brakes haul this big guy down from speed without drama. Applying light pressure while carving the canyon roads that run throughout the Moab region extracts an equally composed response, which is good, as mistakes here can have grave consequences. We're pretty sure we saw more than one burned out suburban rotting in the valleys below. Drift away